All right, so we're gonna jump right into it. So cortisol, or the stress hormone, has really been taken to the forefront of research due to its correlated effects on health and the management of diabetes complications, as well as its involvement in short-term memory loss. Now, you may be familiar with the term, but you may not exactly know what cortisol is. Cortisol is a steroid hormone made in the adrenal glands. Its jobs are numerous, including increasing blood sugar, suppressing the immune system, it fights inflammation, it assists in metabolizing macronutrients such as fat, protein, and carbohydrates, and it decreases bone formation. Now, it's known as the stress hormone because the body releases cortisol in response to both physical and psychological stress. This is great short term. However, chronically elevated levels of cortisol can block nerve cell function and shrink the hippocampus or the brain's memory center when it also occurs along with low DHEA. Now it is normal for our body to have cyclical fluctuating levels of cortisol throughout the day. Early morning tends to be the highest and the lowest is at night, generally around midnight. Levels will also change throughout the day, um, especially in around noon and early evening. Now, what can cause elevated cortisol levels? Well, eating disorders, chronic stress, Cushing syndrome, oral contraceptives, physical activities, tumors of the adrenal or pituitary glands, and pregnancy. Now, what are some symptoms of high cortisol? Well, anxiety, cravings for sweets and carbs, mood swings, trouble sleeping, memory loss, a weakened immune system, joint pain, blood sugar imbalance, metabolic disorders, belly fat, and GI distress. Now, it is important to manage the symptoms of high cortisol early on. The longer cortisol persists at an elevated level, the more detrimental those effects are on the body. So practicing stress management, uh, proper hydration, getting rest, maybe magnesium, melatonin, and L-thionine are important supplements that can help as well. Underlying inflammation can create a lot of stress too. So you want to make sure that if there are underlying issues within the body, you're addressing those. Diet is also important, so you want to make sure that you eliminate processed foods, fast food, perhaps caffeine, uh, sodas, anything that might be inflammatory, fried foods, seed oils, all of that. You can also practice meditation, exercise, again, increasing your water content. I like to take five minute walks throughout the day without my phone because that all helps to balance out the uh, nervous system. Now let's jump into low cortisol. Chronic persistent stress not only leads to elevated cortisol levels, but over time can deplete or lower cortisol levels. So it'll go up and then drop down. Now the adrenals begin to lose their ability to regulate and produce cortisol. This is often referred to as adrenal fatigue. The problem is not necessarily with adrenal glands, but rather with the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands. This stress and the surge of cortisol interrupt the circuitry in the brain's signaling pathways. Symptoms of low cortisol include those of high cortisol before it drops to chronic fatigue, weakness, darkening of the skin, unexplained weight loss, low blood pressure, and low blood sugar. Now there are supplements that you can take to help support the body as you begin to normalize your cortisol levels. And these can include adrenal glandular supplements, ashwagandha, and licorice root. But before you jump on that, check with your doctor because these supplements may exacerbate your health conditions or interact with medications that you may be on. Cortisol and tinnitus. So adrenal fatigue syndrome 
and may cause tinnitus to worsen due to imbalances in the cardionomic circuit due to cortisol levels. This circuit includes the adrenal glands, the autonomic nervous system, as well as the cardiovascular system. So this is how the adrenal fatigue system happens. The adrenals are taxed due to stress. Stress is a known risk factor for tinnitus. And as the adrenals become more taxed due to chronically elevated cortisol, the autonomic surface nervous system then malfunctions and it causes an overload of norepinephrine and epinephrine. These are the hormones that increase anxiety, lead to insomnia, increase uh, blood pressure, all of which contribute to tinnitus. Now the cardiovascular system is prone to postural hypotension, tachycardia, high heart rate, and increased blood pressure. This becomes a vicious circle where one issue exacerbates tinnitus, then creates a worsening of the symptoms, which then makes the tinnitus worse. It just becomes a circle. So how to determine if you have elevated cortisol or decreased cortisol levels? Well, there are numerous tests that you can do that will help you to determine whether this is something that you should be concerned about. My starting point would to always be your blood chemistry analysis. Now, if your doctor ran a metabolic profile or metabolic test, there should be sodium and potassium listed on there. These numbers help to determine whether or not there is adrenal stress. Elevated or lower than normal levels can indicate taxed adrenals. You can also take an orthostatic test at home if you have a blood pressure monitor. Now, it is important to do the test properly. So when you do the test, it's measuring the functional capacity of your adrenal glands. Basically, you're testing your body's ability to compensate in real time for the changes in vascular tone from laying down to standing up in an upright position. Now, what you wanna to do to complete this test is you're gonna look at the systolic number, which is the larger of the two numbers. And initially, you wanna lay down and rest for five minutes before you take your first measurement. So lay down and rest, take your measurement, and remember that larger number. Now you're gonna deflate the cuff, and then you're going to reinflate the cuff as you stand back up. Now, I want you to remember the second number and do a little math in your head, or you can write it down. If there is a change in the number, this is what we wanna look at. So if there is an increase of 10 to 15 from the second reading from the first, this is normal. If the increase is only zero to five, then this indicates a potential issue. Now, if the systolic number drips upon standing or lowers, this would indicate that you may have low adrenal function. You may also do salivary cortisol tests at home. This is a four point test. Um, so basically you would take a salivary sample four specific times during the day and this allows us to measure whether or not you have elevated or lowered cortisol levels um, following the normal circadian rhythm. Now, urine tests and blood tests that your doctors run specifically for cortisol levels are not good markers at all. I would disregard them, and if your doctor tells you that's what he wants to do, ask for a better test. Um, they don't measure enough of your cortisol. I hope this information helps, and if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. I'll help you as best I can.